Oh, hi. Welcome to my studio. Come on in. My name is Leslie Bockenstedt, and I'm with Message in a Fold. Thank you for stopping by my studio today. And I think maybe I have something to show you. We'll find out. Let me turn the radio off just a moment. Are you a brand new crafter? Have you just got a new room, a space all of your own, and you're not quite sure how you want to lay it out? I don't know how much help I can be for you, but I'm going to tell you about my journey throughout this, setting this place up. And it has been going on for a number of years. First, I have to tell you a little bit, a little bit of background. I get, I have in the past got to work in this room about two months a year, and that's all. Um, my day job was an over-the-road truck driver, so I was gone most of the year. This is the state of Virginia, going southbound on Interstate 71. And up ahead, the left lane is closed. Or at least the sign indicates it is. So we'll see what kind of craziness is up ahead of I would come home, then I would do a little bit of crafting before I had to go back out again. So I just put stuff wherever. I have got a set of kitchen cabinets up along here and I'll show that to you. And I have a, an armoire here and I'll show that to you as well. And I have a, I don't know, I have another thing that's not really an armoire and I'll show that to you as well. There's very little space here in this room, but it is full of magical things. Back over here, I have some of the jet storage cubes that hold my paper and stuff. And then back over here, I have more of the jet storage cubes. These are my kitchen cupboards that my husband put up and that's the lighting that I have uh, that I use for filming over my work table which is right down here. The table I bought at Ikea probably in about 2007 yeah, I think 2007. So I've had this table for seven years. There is an extension that goes with it, but I don't have room for it. So I just have the main part of it. This office chair was picked up at a... a, a, a we live in Oklahoma and we live in a college town. And so one of the universities was getting rid of a bunch of their furniture. They got some brand new stuff in. And I got this nice chair for, uh, I think, $7. And this is like a $200 chair. It's got a water stain on the seat. But that's okay. It's all right. I want to take you over into the corner. This is my closet. And this is a bedroom. So that's the closet and that's where my die cutting machine and my dies live right now. Those boxes, they used to hold a lot of stuff that has now been transferred up into the cupboards that I'm going to show you. I still have a couple of items in that box up there, uh, but not much. I can finally get to this corner. I'll tell you, that was a trial. And if you've read my blog recently, uh, then you will put your hands to your face and say, What was she thinking? It was a mess.
Okay, so while we're in here, I'm going to work my way around clockwise to show you what's what happens in this room. Coming out of the closet, coming out from the closet, which is right over there, I have a stand down there that used to hold my ribbons and I didn't care for it and now it's a stand for the lovely beautiful thing that Jan from What You Make It made me and I'm going to be working in that um, in February. Those four drawers down there they hold my rubber stamps as well as the other four. That that set of book things, fake book things, has my cardstock card bases in. And if you've looked at my scrap rehab videos, that's where all my scraps live, right there. I have some ribbon up there. Um, not a lot of it, but I do have some. Okay, and this room is still a work in progress, but it's working for me now. These are my Jet Max cubes that I have over here. There's my scrap paper and I keep some of my paper trimmers over there laying on their side and sorry this is where I keep my scoreboard all my papers are here. These two top drawers hold my ribbon spools. I don't have a lot of ribbon, but I have enough ribbon that it can be a chore to try and figure out what I'm going to use. These two drawers here have my large rubber stamps in them. Oh, tip over there and take a look. These are these are some bigger wood mounted stamps. I'll give you a close up view of them in just a moment. These two drawers right here. This one is my chipboard stuff and I have several chipboard albums. I have some Maya Road things and some more chipboard stuff. And in this one is file folders like this and tags. I'm trying, I am going to work on the Tim Holtz tags and I'm trying to start on the January one right now. So my tags and things are in this drawer. And those are uh, like journal pieces, whatever, when, when I do scrapbooks. And I have used some of these in my granddaughter's scrapbook. And I'll show you that as well. Okay, in this set here, as you can see, I have my paper. This top drawer is my beads, and I don't do much jewelry making. I'm not confident in that stuff yet, but I have the supplies, so I can craft this. And this drawer, I have lunch bags. I have lunch bags for the mini albums. And I have these frames, these uh, poster board, whatever, these are mats, frame mats. I got these for 
25 cents. And so I bought a whole bunch of them. And I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I'm sure I'll find something to do with them. And then in this bottom drawer is where I keep my brads and just mostly brads. It's down in here. Now, now up on top of my Jet Max things, I have my punches. And I have some along the wall back there. You can see them standing up. And of course, my work hat, that my hard hat that I altered, so that the people, when I went to the ports uh, around the United States, that they would be sure to know, oh, looky there, that first of all, that I'm a woman, ha ha ha, and that I'm there to go to work. I gotta fix that. I have my room laid out in this manner, from the closet with the die cutting things, along this wall with the, with the window where my scrap papers and things are, and then this wall with my jet pack. I have this set up in this arrangement because it's things that I kind of go to mostly. I don't always, but I can get the paper that I want and then just just walk that way and go into the closet and do my die cutting. And, and I really don't want to take you off the tripod um, because I'm going to make you sick and I have a problem with motion sickness. You'd think that a truck driver wouldn't have, but I do. All right. Now, let me get to what I want to tell you. Again, this is my work table. And I sit here and I do my work. I make things like this mini album for my granddaughter. Her birthday is in February, so I have this made. And I'm waiting just a little bit longer before I mail it off. So as I'm working with the paper and the die cuts and whatever, I tried to lay my room out in a way that was efficient in movement. It was total chaos before. Total chaos. I'll show you some pictures. Or you can go to my blog and you can read the craziness that happened. All right, so what inspired me? If you read through organizing organ yeah organizing uh, blogs books whatever their mantra is like with like and I can tell you I took everything out of this room a couple of years ago everything everything came out of here and was in my kitchen and my living room down the hallway I was blocked in. It was a mess. If there had been a fire, I would have died in the fire because I had no way to get to anywhere to get out. <clears throat> and I was putting like with like. And when I came to put things back in the room, I, I was tired first. I was stressed out. And by the time I had everything out of this room and scattered throughout the house and sorted out, I was so done with it that I just started putting crap away. And that's when these precious tools of the thing that I love, my scrapbooking supplies, my card making supplies, my book making supplies became crap. I had crap in here. Well, 
I no longer have crap and I want to show you what I did. So right here is my chair. You can see here's my chair and here's my table. All right. This cupboard right directly above where I work, I have my radio that I listen to and it has a CD player so if I feel like I want to listen to some special music, I can. But it's right there and I can turn it on and turn it off, whatever. Okay, I'm going to have to tip you back. So hang on. Up here in the cupboard. I tried to make this cupboard be filled with the things that I use the most. This shelf is all of my adhesives. I constantly use adhesives. Wet glue. I have the, the spare rolls for my uh, what do you call it machines? There they are, right there. My tape runners. I have an assortment of stuff. Just a moment. I have an assortment of stuff right here in this box. This is where I keep my metal tape. And you will remember my adventures in metal tape when I created... my ink pad storage, my spray mist storage, and my ink refill storage <clears throat> out of foam core. <clears throat> so that's where the famous tape came in. Sorry. I have my rolls of double-sided tape in here and just regular scotch tape. I have my glue dots, <clears throat> excuse me, and I have uh, the two-way glue. In here I have some foam tape, glue stick. This is my favorite glue, this Zig two-way pin, but as you can see, the poor thing is empty and I've got to find a supplier of some new stuff. And this is, this is the liquid stuff, two-way glue, from Stampin' Up. So I do have a backup if I need it. Um, these are more glue dots. These are vellum glue dots. This is, this is awesome stuff if you're working on vellum. And then back behind here, I have my uh, red liner tape and my two packages of score tape. And then I have my foam puff dots. I have my supply of them, and they're all here. And I made this box, as you can see, with the metal tape and the foam core board. I made this box. And you can check out my blog. I don't remember what post it was, but you can check out my blog to see how I determined what went where and how to get everything to fit. All right, so I'm going to put this stuff back. But this, I use glue most of the time. And you probably do as well, use glue. So consider where you're going to store it from where you sit. Do you have easy access to it down below on the right in a storage drawer or something down there, or maybe on the left? Um, hopefully your glue and adhesives are nearby. Not something that making a project is a chore because you have to travel far to get it. All right. And I'll tell you, in my room organization, I found bottles of glue everywhere. I found Oops, I found tape. I found all kinds of stuff all over the place. 
Now, my liquid glues, if you, if you read my blog, you'll see how I built, I even have some videos on how I built these storage boxes out of cardboard. And the cardboard is right there in the doorway. And it, it just about blocks the whole access in here, but that's my cardboard stash. All right, let's get back here. This box is my liquid adhesive. I have a tiny bit of tacky glue, not much. I have two bottles of Beacons 3-in-1. And the only reason why I have two of them is because I forgot I had this one and was looking for some particular adhesive and the description said that this was it and I get home with this brand new bottle and said, I've already got that. Hmm, how often do you do that? I have two bottles of glossy accents. One of them went with me when uh, when I was a truck driver, when and if I had time to do any crafting, which wasn't very often. And I have my tube of E6000, and I love this stuff. It stinks to high heavens, but I love this stuff. I have Mod Podge. And I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this stuff. And my favorite glue, my most favorite glue, and I, I think you can only get it here in the United States. This stuff is from Club Scrap. It's their book binding and padding, book binding, padding, and laminating glue. And I've been told that you can get the same results with a Mod Podge that you can with this, but I think... Where is it? I think you might have better results with this Aileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue over the Mod Podge. And as you see, I have a bottle of that. But I like this stuff so much that I went ahead and spent, I think, $35 for this larger bottle of it. And see, I've used quite a bit of it. I use a lot of it. And the other thing I keep is baby powder. This stuff if you have uh, if you have something that's sticky and you need to unsticky it, put baby powder on top of it. That will unsticky it. So that's there. Now I'm not much of a glitter person. I'm just kind of getting into glitter, but not a whole lot. I have glitter and pearlex and glitter glue on this shelf. And let me tell you, I found this stuff in the closet, in those drawers that I showed you earlier. I found all this stuff in nearly every cupboard in here. I found it in plastic shopping bags. I found it hanging from doorknobs. I found it stashed away in places where it really didn't need to be. So, I didn't realize I had so much stuff. And then, uh, this is my supply of, this is my supply of Stampin' Up! Dazzling Diamonds. And this is my glitter. This is Martha Stewart glitter. And then I found these mica glitter things, and some of them have big chunks. I thought that was really cool. But I had some other little glitters and didn't have anything to put it in. Uh, yeah, right. So I threw them away. And after I threw them away and got my room cleaned here, I found some little tiny things that I could have put it in. Boo hiss! What a... Yeah. Well, here's my glitter glue. These are buckets that I picked up at Target probably six or seven years ago and they were a dollar a piece and I picked up a whole bunch of them I had no idea what I was going to do with them so they sat in a cupboard all this time and so now they are the repository of my 
glitter stuff. I have stickles and I have Studio G stuff and if it's glitter and it's glue it all goes in here and I made the tag for that and And this is my Pearl X. Whoops, up here. This is my Pearl X, and it is also my Perfect Pearls. Tim Holtz, Ranger Industries, whatever. Perfect Pearls. And I have a blog post about this, making my daughter's, my granddaughter's mini album. I used the Pearl X, and you have to use a little bit of glue, a liquid glue, as a binder, where with per, uh, Perfect Pearls, you don't need to have that kind of a binder. So this is my glittery shelf. My sparkle shelf. And included on that shelf are my Twinkling H2O's and this paint palette of watercolors that have glitter in them. I have no idea what they're called. I got them from Hobby Lobby. There's no name on them. I don't know what brand it is. Um, it was over in the paint section, the watercolor paint section at Hobby Lobby. And I think it was like $3.99 or $4.99 or something. And then the thing to make these beautiful butterflies from Martha Stewart. So this is my my glitter stuff. When you're working out how your room is going to be laid out, what do you go to the most often? Are you a glitter girl or a glitter guy? And you use glue? Figure out how to put these two together somehow where it's easy for you to get. Uh, maybe get some little floating shelves. And um, if, you don't, if you don't have, if you aren't able to put uh, cupboards like this up in your space, get some little shelves. And if you have a small area, my advice to you is go vertical. If you can't go out horizontal, go vertical. Go up. So, Put your little shelves up and put your go-to all the time stuff close by your workstation. And then up on the top shelf, now hopefully this tripod won't tip over. I have one leg shorter than the other two. All right, on this top one, I just got to remember not to kick it are my colored pencils, I mean pens, markers. These are Stampin' Up! and look, fancy. It is absolutely the most expensive design item you'll ever find, a food can that's been cleaned out. But that's where my markers live. And this is all the, all the markers that I have of this kind. I don't use them. I'm not a coloring person. I am... I need, I really want to give it a try sometime, but right now I'm not a coloring person. However, I'm going to learn how to do it. This is another really, really expensive um, storage item. This is my pens, the different pens that I do use. I have some, I love these Millennium pens. I love these things. And I have them in several different colors as well as nib widths. And I have some glitter. I have some glitter gel pens. And then I have these gold leaf and silver pens like that. And I have a, a Versamark pen. But my pens, they're in an Oreo cookie tray. See? Real expensive. But that's what my pens are in. And then up there are my Copics that I got from a friend, a, a wonderful friend. 
and then some more markers in another can. So, loot your recycling bin. If you're having soup tonight, out of a can, rinse it out, clean it up good, let it dry, then you got your new storage device. Another bucket, and this is my ink spots from uh, Stampin' Up and Club Scrap and whatever, but it's just, and some, what is this, Dew Drop. So all of these little ink spot things, they're in this bucket. And then up here, I have some flock that I have used oh, a time or two, not very many times, but it still is a coloring agent. And then I have my chalks from Stampin' Up. And the last item up there is uh, spare light bulbs for my, my uh, video lights. So when you're making your space, consider what it is you use the most. And in that way, then put like with like. It's important that you do that in that manner. So anyway, so you can, you can have access to the stuff that you use a lot. And then it'll be easier for you to put things away as you're working. And let me tell you, I... I, 2014, I'm going to put things away when I'm done with them. I am having a modicum of success with that. But I am having some success. Okay. So now we'll go to the next cupboard. This is my filming light. And I have to take it off, and it is on these pinch clip things here. My husband is an avid film photographer, and he used to have a black room, a dark room, when he was younger, because he would he would develop all of his own film. So there's a one of our closets in this house has got his. Uh, film developing supplies that are not used. So I am uh, borrowing some of his items. Anyway, here in this cupboard, I do mostly, I make books, I make journals. This is a thing that I made for my husband. It is a chipboard, front and back cover, and I used the uh, cinch for the binding and so here's the here's the inside of the book in the first place has notebook paper that he can write on and then on the second place is some graph paper that he can make his drawings on and I'm making one of these, one of one of our sons, his son, is uh, uh, an engineer as well, and I'm in the middle of making a book for him for his birthday in February. So I do a lot of books like this. So my binding things, um, my new cinch, my bind it all, Zutter bind it all is there. And in this thing, this is my silent setter. And it it is a set that punches holes and sets eyelets. This was something one of my first purchases back in about 2006. This was the very first one of the very first things I bought when I started this. 
this is another Christmas present I got from a friend of a dear friend of mine and I really enjoy this thing it's a slice tool set so this comes in handy and it's right there where I have access to it now up here are my crocodile whoa 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 don't fall over and my big bite and this silent setter these are all hole punches and and uh, eyelet setters and stuff and they're for my book binding and whatever so they are all in one area right here are the wires for my book binding and I have enough room in this cabinet I can come down one more set of pegs if I add more of these wires I have got a and I want to figure out how to use this this is a stamping and I mean really stamping uh, these, these are little metal things and they have letters and numbers on them and you bang them into a metal and I want to use that as a matter of fact I want to use that on my son's project so my punching my punching tools and my binding tools are all in this cabinet here and um, these are this is part of my camera I didn't know where else to put it and these are some of the videotape cassettes that I use or have used. So when I need something, since my camera sits right there on my table, then I just have to reach up there when I run out of uh, when I run out of tape on my camera, then I just have to reach up there and get a fresh one and put it in. And that up there is some plexiglass pieces and you can I don't know what I'm... I'm going to try to do something with them. But I don't know yet what. So, do you do... What is the next thing that you use the most of in conjunction? Me, I use glue. And I use chipboard. And I make books. So, I have my binding and my glue right next to each other. because that's what I work on the most. All right, now we'll go over to the end cupboard on that side. Back over by the door. And let me take this one off. Right. Hope I don't blind you with that light. All right, this is my binding stuff. This is not binding, but this is my bookmaking stuff. This is chipboard. This is all of my chipboard pieces. This is my scrap pieces. That's cardboard over there. I do keep the scraps because there are times when you need it. Now, I don't keep the little bitty scraps, but I do keep... Let's see. I keep pieces like this because I can always put a sticker or something on. Well, as a matter of fact, I made some tags. I made some tags using chipboard pieces. I covered the backs of them. But these are chipboard scraps that I've made these tags. And this one. And this one. and this one and this one and this one with the wiggly buttons those are so so where did it go did I did I already put it back wow I'm getting so good I guess I did so keep your keep your scrap pieces you never know how they're going to come in handy 
Um, these are um, lined notepads. I use those I cut those up to make notepads. These are full 8.5 by 11. These are, and then I cut them down. And I've got a video showing how to use a uh, an industrial paper cutter that my husband got me for a Christmas present. And I'm using it. So, anyway, that's, that's that. And up here is pl plastic packaging. Um, you might think, what idiot would keep plastic packaging? Well, uh, this idiot does. And this is plastic packaging like embossing folders come in. You've got a big area to work on something. And why go... <sighs> How much have you spent on an embossing folder? Uh, $12 and then you're going to throw away the plastic and then you're going to make a project that requires a piece of acetate and then you've got to go buy it and you've got to spend uh, probably $5 for some acetate. Well let me show you something. See that right there? Look at that. Look at that beautiful thing right there. That's a die cut from plastic packaging. And I was able to put bling over the top of it. Not everything is trash. Although my husband might beg to differ. So I keep my plastic packaging. And I have a special box for my Tim Holtz embellishments. And these three boxes that are up there, I made them from my cardboard. And I have a I have a video on YouTube about making the cardboard boxes. As a matter of fact, I think there's five of them that take you through the process of making one box. But this is where this is where I have my Tim Holtz stuff. Where I can get at these things and this is just Tim Holtz stuff. I don't have anybody else. That's a lie. I have some keys. I have some skeleton keys that I purchased from a uh, a lock. You know, if if you need a key and you you need to. You need, I don't I don't know it's a lock store it's a place where they sell locks and make keys and get you back in your car or get you back in your house whatever anyway they were selling skeleton keys and uh, about three or four years ago I wanted to make Santa keys and this is one of the skeleton keys and and this is a motel key and yes you'll see that bit of nastiness in a minute but you hang this ribbon on the doorknob and it's there for Santa to come in homes that don't have chimneys and this goes on the Christmas tree this hangs on the Christmas tree and when Santa has come the children know that he's been there because then this gets hung on the Christmas tree. So, I wanted to make a whole bunch of those, but uh, I had to go back out and be a truck driver. So, anyway. And that last box is cards that I've made. And this thing, I had fun with this. A spin and splash. And um, I'm going to have to do something with this again. Alcohol inks on photo paper. Oh, it's fun. It's a blast. It's a mess, but it's a blast. So anyway, it's up there. I make post-it note holders.
Anyway, I made a whole bunch of them a couple of years ago and sold a few of them. So I keep post-it notepads and pins uh, and pins to go along with the post-it note holders that I make. And then this, I'm not taking that box out because it's going to be a mess, but this is only part of my stash of motel keys. Somebody told us, told my husband and I, we would stay in hotels nearly every night, well, every night that we were out working. So about 250, 275 nights a year, we were out on the, we were out in hotels and probably the other 30 or 35, we were at home. So, well, that still doesn't add up to be 365. So anyway, the other 100 nights, we would be home out of the year. But we were told that these magnetic strips on the back of the keys, that our credit card and our home information and our telephone and our whole life's history was on these strips that work the hotel. We, I, freaked out. So we kept the keys. And then I later found out on Snopes, and I still don't know if this is true or not. I don't know. But I kept the keys. But on Snopes or Swopes or whatever, it's, I think it's Snopes, they say that's this is not true. But I don't know. They make excellent things to play with. If you only have one or two, they are really good to smear paint or stuff around. Glue. Anything that you might, you might need to smear. They do. They do that. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to... Let's see. I think I've told you... Oh, these are my pieces of foam core. These are my scrap pieces of foam core from when I built my um, ink stands and stuff. Spray ink and whatever. But I keep those. You never know when you'll need something. All right. Now we'll go to the last one. And it's on the furthest end in my scrap room. And why? Because it's stuff that, that I don't use like I do this stuff. I use this chipboard and things a lot. A lot, a lot. I use my glue. I use my glue stuff all the time, and I use my bind it all a lot. But this stuff over here in this corner, I don't use much. All right, this cupboard here has it. it up there is stuff that that I have made. Um, it has wood blocks when I took my uh, rubber stamps off the blocks. But that top shelf there has stuff that eh, I don't really use. Here's all my bling. Rhinestones. Halfback pearls. All of that stuff is in there. And this is, it says tiles. But it's, it's these clear frame things that are not Tim Holtz. It's some little epoxy pebbles. Um, it's some little epoxy squares. Sticky back buttons. And the tiles that this bucket was actually named for. I don't use those things very much, but they are together. So when I need something like that, they're all there in that area. Um, I bought some new bling from Michael's yesterday, a dollar. And there's three yards. And this is that mesh, mesh gems. You know, you can cut a string of it off and put it on your project and cut another string off and continue it around. Or you can just pull out a whole long width of it and cover it with the with the, the bling, but three bucks, one dollar a piece. 
and they're over in the dollar bins at Michael's. It was shiny. That's that's my only excuse. It was shiny. And I get attracted to shiny stuff. Whoa, whoa. This is bling from K and Company that I have used but not used up, so I still have some stuff. And here's more blingy, glittery stuff. And and then I have a strip of flowers on lace. But since they're so long and big and don't fit anything, then they lay here on the shelf by the bling. And then this corner here is all my flowers. And a dollar, Michaels. A dollar. Yeah. I went in to go get some specifically for some paper to make my son's birthday present and this dollar stuff attacked me I swear it attacked me it jumped in my arms and it it wouldn't go back on the shelf it wouldn't behave itself so I had to take it home with me that might work will that work as an excuse I hope so okay well, I have binder clips. I have some really pretty binder clips. One or two. Not many. These things, they were... Have you ever gone to a store and you purchased something and you were so excited by what you saw? Marketing people are geniuses. They are totally devious. They are out to get us, I tell you. Anyway, I was in a store, and I, as a matter of fact, in this bucket, look, you can even see it, it says chipboard bucket, and it shows some of the chipboard that's inside. I saw that, and I said, you know, I think I'd like to have that stuff. I really think I would like to have that chipboard stuff. Ooh, it was 1995 or something. And I thought, oh, yeah, look, it's even worse. These marketing people, look, a $25 value. So I must have got it for like $15 or $14.95, whatever. So I bought it. That was in probably 2007. And here it all is. Here are the red ones. Here are the orange ones. Whoops! I'm gonna throw them at you. I don't know where it is. I'll step on it in a minute, I guess. Here are the yellow ones. Here are the purple ones. Green. And blue. So as you could see, I sorted them out by color. Why? Uh, a head case? That's the only reason why. And I got these from eBay probably in about 2006 and they're little circles with letters on them. And I have made a word, a couple of words with these things. But I don't use them much. Oh, let's see. This goes back up there. Get it where it belongs. Now, these things I have used a lot. This is glitter chipboard. I've used nearly all of them. I do like these. 
so I use these. The purchase of those has not been as uh, as the purchase of that stuff. These chipboard things. Crazy. All right, anyway, this bit of foolishness. I don't use this stuff very much, so it is together, like with like, my bling and my tiles and stuff. At least I know where all that crazy bling is that I bought, which I didn't know before because it was down in these drawers and back in the closet and in bags. Now it's all together. But I don't use it much, so it's over here in this cupboard. Everything I use the most of is real handy. Whoops, sorry. Is real handy to right here, right where I work, right within reach. So if you're thinking about putting a room together, then you might consider, okay. Okay, now I told you that I'd try to show you the armoires. There's not enough room in here for me to move or for me to get this. All right, way up there on the top. Whoops, there. I finally have that that looks nice. I've got some pictures of what it looked like before. All of my photos were up there and caving in the top of the cupboard. But this is... There's my... There are all of my photos. My photos... My photos go all the way across. This, these are of virtually every state I've been in. Things that have been interesting, things that have just been, and visiting with my family everywhere. So that's all photos. Those all used to be up there, and that top was all sway-backed. Here I have cigar boxes. My husband smokes cigars, so when, um, when he stops at a place or when he's done with uh, the box, then I get them. I've got wood ones. Where are you? Anyway, I've got wood ones as well as cardboard ones. I've got metal ones, things that I plan on doing something with. These two shelves here are my sewing. That's where my sewing machine lives, down there. I don't know if I can even get you down there to see it. All right. That's where my sewing machine and serger live. And then these are my sewing supplies. I don't do sewing so much anymore. I used to do that a lot. All right. Now you're tied up in stuff. All right. Come on. Over here, this is um, an embossing machine that I took. It's a texture boutique. I took that along with me out on the road. I have my journals back there that I write in. My thoughts, most of them are... I, I went through a lot of years of being depressed. And my self-worth was like in the toilet. It was really bad. And I've had to work my way out of it. Um... I don't go to counseling, although when my husband and I were first married, the first five years of our marriage, we went through counseling. So I did have somewhat of a background of how to help myself out. But those journals in the back, they are my getting out of the hole and coming up into life, into a wonderful, fantastic life. These are, that's the first um, Sizzix machine I ever owned right there. And I loved this little guy. And then my husband bought me that one as a Christmas present one year. And that thing is too heavy to pull out one-handed. And uh, and then I have some I have some books here from Club Scrap that have some really super images that that I like to sometimes use on different things. And I've got some really good stencils from them. Um, down here, well, there's my Cricut. 
that's another Christmas present that my husband got me, and I have very seldom used it. Uh, my youngest daughter has already called dibs on that when I die. Um, I mean, she did say, Mom, I want that when you die. So she's got dibs on it. And um, and then these are my, some of my, uh, I started doing a, what do you call that, an inventory of the crap, uh, no, not the crap, of the wonderful stuff that I have. So they're in some of those books. And then I have letter templates and stencils and things in there. And I have some stuff over there that I'm really not totally sure of what it is, but it is there. And then down on the bottom shelf, on the very bottom, are the scrapbooks that I have made in the few years that I've been doing this, and then only being home for a couple of months a year. I have done some stuff. Um, all right, so that's these two big cupboards. Okay, this is the last cupboard in my room before you go out the door. And this one is kind of, well, I'll just take you over. This shelf and this cupboard, those are my log books. I have to keep them for 10 years. I don't know why. I suppose if somebody comes and says, you were supposed to do jury duty and you didn't show up. Now we're going to clap you in irons. I can get out my log book and show that I was in California or Florida or New York at the time. I don't know why I have to keep them, but the DOT regulations are that I have to keep them for 10 years. So there they are. The next shelf is my stash of acrylic paint and my paint brushes. Now I use the paint brushes quite a bit with my gluing, so I don't put that over with my glue but I just leave them over here because they go with paint. That's just stuff. We have an old IBM typewriter that I use from time to time and those are the ribbons for it. And then down there in the bottom that's some of my music CDs that I like to listen to and then there's more of my journals of the progress of my life over here on this side, I have some ultimate fails. But some of the things turned out pretty neat. <clears throat> so I keep them to kind of remind myself of a technique that I did when I first started. So I don't, you know, it might not be something that you are totally over the moon about, but it was it was my practice. So that's kind of like, along with my other journals, this, these are stories of my growth as a crafter. And you will have stories of growth of a crafter of your own, if you don't already have some. Those are my Xyron machine uh, refill things, and those are over in the closet. And these are my supplies for making the post-it note holders and oh, one of my daughters used to be a, uh, uh, oh, uh, what do you call that? Those people that call you at supper time and say, hey, do you need your carpets cleaned? Well, these people, my daughter was working for a company like that out of California and they said, hey, we have a deal. Would you like to advertise? And I was trying to support my daughter in doing that, so I had a bazillion pens printed with message in a fold, and she no longer works for them. And that was four years ago, and they still call me. About every month or two, do you need more pens? No. 
I don't. And down there, I'm not going to get the book, the box out, but those are, that's a box of blocks. Where are they? Where am I pointing to? Right there. Blocks. They're just wood blocks, and I can cover them and do whatever I want with them. And anyway, so now this has been over an hour. So this has taken over an hour to give you a tour of my my studio. It's no longer my crap room. Um, I hope that in all of my blathering that you have got some ideas on how to set up your space, how to make your space usable and workable for you so that it's not a, a nightmare. I got to the point where I didn't like coming in here. First, I didn't know where anything was, and it was such a flaming mess. And I have photographic evidence of flaming mess, let me tell you. I have lots of evidence of it. I didn't like coming in here um, because of all the clutter, all of the crap. It, I just didn't like coming in here. And to try to create something in this mess was almost impossible. It has taken me about six years of trial and error to get this room into the shape that it is now. So I'm hoping that by me telling you how my room is set up, that it won't take you six years to figure out. And maybe by that time you'll be so tired of this, this absolutely fabulous craft that you'll get out of it. You'll sell your stuff and go on because it's not fun, and it's not convenient, and it's a big pain in the butt. So, I hope this has helped. I hope this has been of some help to you, that you can do things, you can have a craft room in a small bedroom, in a small area. Oh, I see these big giant craft rooms with counters along an entire wall, and I tell you, I do lust after them. Oh man, do I ever want one of those big craft rooms. That would be my dream, to have a big spacious craft room with an island in the center. Oh, but I don't have that. So I have what works for me. And I'm happy with what I've got. Finally, finally, yes, I'm happy. So, maybe... Maybe I have helped you get an idea of what to do in your room. I do not recommend that you take this project on and do it all in one day or all in two days. Uh, you'll be back, you'll be like I was. Just put crap away and shove it anywhere where it's going to fit. Make a plan. Figure out where, where... Do you work? Where is your work table? Where is the space that you create? Where do you sit? Where do you do your, where do you stand? Do, are you a standing crafter or are you a sitting crafter? Do you work mostly with uh, uh, the Cricut or the Eclipse or do you work mostly with a die cutting machine? So, and then you don't, uh, you know, glue and adhesive and stuff is a secondary thing. Put your um, cutting your die, digital die cutting machines, well, whatever those things are called, figure out how to put them close to where you stand or sit in your creative process. And then where will your adhesives and things be? Try to make it so that everything that you do to be creative is within your reach. And not that you have to get up and down and go from one end of the room to another. And then by the time you get to that area, then you'll say, What did I come over here for? <laughs> Experience, I can tell you that. 
and then you'll come back to your crafting area and then you'll say arr, arr, arr. I forgot it now I gotta go back and get it arr. save yourself a little bit of trouble figure out your area what is your working space your ideal working space going to be what is it and then make it happen and then what you can do is create things to show someone how special they are. So thank you for coming into my studio today. And thank you for letting me show you around my space. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. I got it right this time. Leave me a comment down in the bottom. I, I appreciate comments. And I will, I will answer your comments. I am finally at a point where I'm no longer taking care of 75 million things at once. So I can get back to the comments. Everybody that subscribes, I appreciate every one of you. And every one of you that leave comments, I appreciate every, every single one of you. This is a crafting community and we are here to help each other. So I hope I've helped you. Thank you for stopping by. Until next time. Bye.